Here we have a reaction, CH3, COO, C2H5 with hydroxide. We see a substitution, CH3, COO now is a negative one charge, and we've made methanol, C2H5OH. We've got temperature generated for several different trials, and we've got K constants generated at seven different trials. I can tell by the K constant that this must be a second order reaction, not that we were asked, but just kind of reviewing those skills. Using this graph, the natural log of K versus 1 over the temperature to use the graph to find the activation energy, reminding us what this is really saying. We want to generate a graph where we have natural log of K on the Y and the reciprocal of the Kelvin temperature on the X. When we run a linear regression, Y equal MX plus B, the diagnostics there, we can find the slope. Once we know the slope, we can plug it into this formula to solve for the activation energy. So we need to generate some lists. First of all, I know I need the Kelvin temperatures. And then ultimately, I need the reciprocal of those Kelvin temperatures. So we'll need Kelvins, and we'll need the reciprocals. So into my list one, and anything is there, just clear it out. I'm going to type in as it is, list one is 15, 25, 35, 45. But I'll put my cursor back up on list one, and I'll say list one plus 273. Now I have flipped them into Kelvins. So just to jot that down so we can see what I've done, 15 is really 288 Kelvin, 298 Kelvin, 308 Kelvin, and 318 Kelvin units. But in order to graph, we need the reciprocals. So now I'll put my cursor back up on L2 and go 1 excuse me, it's list one, one divided by list one to turn those into reciprocal values. And this is the values that we find. 0 0.00347, and I'll jot those here. 0 0.00347, 0 0.00336, 0 0.00325, 0 0.00314. 0 the reciprocal of the Kelvin temperatures in list one. List 2, we have K constants given to us. So let's type into list 2, as written, the Ks, 0 0.0521, 0 0.101, 0 0.1800, 0 0.1800, 0 0.1800, But I also know that when I plot, I need it to be the natural log of Ks. So make your calculator do that work. Place your cursor up on L2, and just take the natural log of list 2, and it will flip it for you. So I have negative 2.955, negative 2.293, negative 1.693, negative 1.103. We have the two lists we need to graph. So again, just remind ourselves what we're graphing. The natural log of K, the reciprocal of the Kelvin temperatures. We're going to run a diagnostics of a straight line where the slope is negative EA over R. So let's go to work doing that. Stat key, calculate, a linear regression, choice four. I have my list in list one, comma, list two. And we get this diagnostic screen. For y equal ax plus b, a is equal to negative 5638.34. That's the slope of our line. That's the piece of information we need to calculate the activation energy. This slope is equal to negative EA, which comes out in joules, over the R constant. So the slope is negative EA over 8.31. I just merely have to take the slope from the diagnostics, multiply it by 8.31, take the opposite of it, because activation energy is always positive. So 5638.34 times 8.31, and I get my value for activation energy. It's a large number because it's joules. So it comes out to be 46854.6 joules, or if you prefer, 46.85 kJs. 
What if we were asked to calculate the activation energy from the two-point Arrhenius equation? So instead of generating lists into the data table, we're able to use our equation page where we're asked to use this particular setup. The natural log of K1 over K2 set equal to Ea must be in joules over R times the difference of T2 minus T1 as reciprocals. So let's plug that out. My piece of advice is to always take the trials that are farthest away so you get a true representation of the slope of the line. I don't want to take two points that are right onto each other. I'm not getting a nice representation of a true line. So take the farthest points possible. The natural log of K1 over K2 is equal to Ea over R times the reciprocal of T2 minus T1. All I've done so far is just copied my equation, the two-point Arrhenius equation. So instead of graphing, we'll plug numbers in. Let's call this trial 1 and this will be trial 2, just kind of the farthest points possible. So the natural log of K1, 0 0.0521 over K at time 2 here, so 0 0.332 farthest points possible equals, we're trying to solve for Ea, 8.31 is our R constant, T2 Kelvin temperature 1 over 318 minus 1 over 288 Kelvin units. We're going to simplify pulling out for activation energy which we know will come out positive. Let me simplify the left side first. The natural log 0 0.0521 divided by 0 0.332 and I have negative 1.852. Let's simplify what's in this parentheses. 1 divided by 318 minus 1 divided by 288. In this value is negative 3.276. Alrighty, still looking for Ea. So the algebra continues. I'll type in next on my uh, calculator sequence negative 1.852 divided by negative 3.276 and that's my value for what Ea over R is. To get rid of 8.31, multiply both sides by 8.31 and we get a number. And I'm off. I'm going to re-hit. You do the same because that here's how I know that I'm wrong. 8 made no sense. <laughs> I have to come back and find a number close to what I calculated before. So I must have hit something wrong. As usual, I start over. I don't give up. I just start over. 0 0.0521 divided by 0.332. And I just check my work. That looks correct. Let me try this simplifying again. 1 divided by 318 minus 1 divided by 288. That looks fine. So I want to bring this side over. And I got the same thing twice. What I have a hunch is this number really is times 10 to the negative fourth. That's what I'm missing on my calculator screen. Somebody just help me with that. Thank you that when I recorded this value, 3.276, I neglected to look at the very end of the screen, times 10 to the negative 4, and of course that's going to be the decimal difference when I find Ea. So, negative 1.852 divided by negative 3.276 times 10 to the negative fourth, there's the corrected value, times 8.31, and presto. Thank goodness. Thank you for my calculator, buddy. 46978.4 joules. Or if you prefer, 
46.98 kilojoules. And the reason I was struggling, the reason I knew I made a mistake, I don't give up, I just keep trying, I should get something so close. I mean, they have to be pretty close. The values are indeed coming from the same line. So the values are indeed close. And if they are not, just as I was discovering, keep trying. You're making a calculator error somewhere along the line, perhaps like I was. We have one more to try together. It's number 56. Number 56 also has us graphing and using the two-point form of Arrhenius. Here we have Kelvin temperatures running at a series of trials and some K constants running. Calculate EA and the frequency factor by graphing techniques. So by graphing techniques, very similar to what we've done up here, we have to generate natural log of Ks over the reciprocal of Kelvin temperatures and find the slope, knowing that the slope will give us negative EA over R. So what I'll do is just go back to my stats, clear my list out. Let's type in the temperatures as they appear, 600, 650, 700, 750, and 800. I'll turn them into reciprocals of Kelvin temperatures by taking 1 divided by list 1 we have our values. So the reciprocal of the Kelvin temperatures, 0 0.00167, 0 0.00154, 0 0.00133, this value is 0 0.00125, I messed up here. 600, 650, 700, 750, 800. It's got off by a line. We'll do the same for Kelvins. Let's go through here for the rate constant Ks. I mean 0 0.028, 0 0.22, 1.3, 1 6, and 23. So you'll notice my lists are correct. I have a matching reciprocal of temperature and its corresponding k constant. But I want that to be in natural logs. So I'm going to take natural log of list 2 and I generate the number. And very clearly I see a matching correspondence Kelvin temperature reciprocal versus the natural log of k constant. So for each one of my trials I've got that entered in correctly. We want a graph. So graph, calc, choice 4 is your linear regression. Mine are contained in list 1, list 2, and let's run that diagnostics. We find from running the graph that A is equal to negative 16108.45. Remember, that's the slope of our line. The slope is equal to negative EA over R. R is our constant, 8.31. So to find activation energy, I type in the slope times 8.31, and knowing that activation energy will always be positive, it's an energy barrier. So 16108.45 times 8.31, and we get a number. 133861.5. one hundred and thirty three point eight six kilojoules. We're also asked to solve for the frequency factor. Remember from our formula page, the frequency factor related to the frequency of collisions and the probability that collisions are favorably oriented. That frequency factor indicates how many of these collisions are actually successful. Frequency factor comes from the Arrhenius equation. We take a K constant, just to remind ourselves here, a K constant, A E raised to the negative E A over R T. This is what we're trying to solve for. So we have a choice. I mean, it wouldn't matter. The Ks are, these frequency factors are indeed relatively constant. You might find a slight variance between any of the trials, but not significant. 
So let's pick trial 1 for no other reason than it's written first. It's k constant 0 0.028. I'm solving for a. e is being raised to the negative ea has to be in a joule. So negative 133861.2 joules over r 8.31 times that Kelvin temperature 600 K units. We're going to pull out A, the frequency factor. Let's simplify what's going on in these parentheses here first. So negative 133861.2 divided by the R and the Kelvin temperature. E raised to that answer is this entire thing simplified. 2.19 times 10 to the negative 12th. Now of course to pull out A, I have to start on the left side. 0 0.028 divided by that answer and I get a value. A is 1.28 times 10 to the 10th power. A little over a billion. 12 billion molecules are meeting the criteria of energy and orientation. So this is a number telling us how many molecules are being successful in their collision orientation and with their energy barrier. Let's compare our calculated from the slope of the line to the EA if we were to use the two-point formula of Arrhenius. Always take the farthest points apart. So the natural log of, let's just call this trial two, this trial one. Natural log of, remember our formula, k1 over k2. So the first constant, 0 0.028 from the first trial, and all the way to the bottom so I get a nice representation of a two line, 23. That's Ea over R times the reciprocal of T2 in a Kelvin minus T1 in a Kelvin. Solve for Ea. Let's simplify the left side by taking natural log of 0 0.028, dividing that out by 23. Did you get what I got? Negative 6.711. Let's now simplify what's in the parentheses here. 1 divided by 800 minus 1 divided by 600 we get a value. Is your screen matching mine? Let's take the left side, which we hit was negative 6.711, divided by that previous answer, times 8.31. And we get a value, 133.844 joules or if you prefer, 133.8 kilojoules. Look how remarkably close we came from the slope of our line calculation, generating with lists, and the activation energy using the two-point Arrhenius equation. And this will always hold true as long as you take the points that are farthest apart from the data table. And you will indeed be calculating the slope of the line.